Hello, welcome to A Lovely Yarn Podcast. Today's episode is a special one. It's not going to be my normal format where I show you what I'm working on and what I've recently completed, but rather this is going to be an episode that I've actually been planning since maybe June, so of this past summer. I wanted to talk about simple yet beautiful shawl patterns that are available out there. And the whole idea of this came up because we were going to be leaving for our family vacation to Maine and I was I had about a 16 hour car ride ahead of me. And so I had just kind of put it out there to my viewers asking for any suggestions on any simple yet pretty and also um, shawl patterns that were going to keep my attention. I compiled a list myself and then I also had some suggestions from my viewers. And so what I have been doing over the last couple of months when I've thought of it is I've just kind of been perusing Ravelry and um, just gathering a list of patterns. I have like around 20 patterns that I have collected here. I've knit some of them and I actually have my, my knits here to show you so that you can actually see the physical um, item. For those patterns that I have not personally knitted myself, I will include a photo off to the side here on the screen. That way you'll be able to see what I'm talking about while I'm talking about it. So I don't have any of these patterns in a particular order. Um, some of them are free, some of them are paid for patterns, and I will try to remember to state that whenever I am giving you um, the information on the pattern. Also, I will have all the links down below to Ravelry to the pattern. So why don't we go ahead and get started then? I do have my laptop to the side here. I actually took notes, um, but I wanted to be able to see the photo while I was talking about it. So I brought my laptop into my bedroom as well so that I can see what I'm talking about. So the first, the first one that I wanted to talk about is called A Little Slice of Sunshine. And I will put a picture of it up here. So this pattern is by Mary Triplett and it is a paid for pattern. It's $5. It uses 400 yards of fingering weight yarn. And I think, so the whole, the fact that it only uses one skein of fingering weight yarn is really appealing to me because I have, so this is my indie dyed fingering weight yarn in this basket here. And I think every single skein that's in there is just a single skein, so I don't have any matching colors. A Little Slice of Sunshine. I really like the look of this. It's very simple with its garter ridge. It's The majority of it is garter ridge, but then you have the border that um, it's like a lace, age, lace edged border. And it's my favorite shape, which is a crescent shape. I have I have I've told you guys before that I am not a fan of asymmetrical shawl patterns. There is one asymmetrical shawl included in this list because I had so many people recommend it to me and I did include it, but I don't know that I will personally knit that one because I find asymmetrical shawls so just awkward to wear. But the Little Slice of Sunshine by Mary Triplett is crescent shaped. I love that because it's not an overly deep shawl, but it's still, you know, I just, I like the way a crescent sh shaped saw shaped. I like the way a crescent shaped shawl lays on my neck. This pattern is both written and charted. So that's nice because I like charts, but not everybody does. And sometimes, like I said, with this, um, last shawl that I'm knitting right now, I, I'm not using the chart on it because I, the chart, in my opinion, isn't, it's confusing to me. So yes, um, and again, whenever I talk about these, I don't have a lot of information. I am just basically basing my decision on the user ratings. So on Ravelry, if you look on to the right side of the screen, you can see how, like the difficulty level of it. And then also just perusing some of the page project pages and seeing what people have to say. So, like I said, I have not personally knitted all of these shawls, um, but they're just, th they're just shawls that I have that have caught my eye and they're my favorites. Okay. So number two, number two is called rolling Hills shawl. 
and it is by Audrey Morris. And this is a very affordable pattern at only $4. It's also done with a single skein of fingering weight yarn. The details say that it uses 425 to 450 yards. It's also crescent shaped, but it has a fan and feather border, which I, I like, I really like that look. Um, it is a, let me zoom here and just make sure. Yeah, it is a garter. It's the majority of it is garter, which like the last shawl, it was also garter. I love garter in a shawl. I love rows and rows of garter because it's so squishy and it's just cozy. And I also really happen to like the look of that. So I think you're probably going to see that a lot of these shawls that I'm talking about today have garter, garter in it, at least some degree of garter. <laughs> But this one is, is beautiful. I think it looks really simple. And then you just have the border that you do, um, which fan and feather, I would assume that would be a very easy to remember lace repeat, um, you know, because you're repeating it for each section. So I think that would be great for a beginner who was doing lace work for the first time. Next one up, I'm going to try to do all the paid for patterns first, and then I'm going to go through the free patterns. So the next pattern was actually recommended to me by um, at least one viewer. And it is called Jamie's Shawl and it is by Cozy Up Knits. Right, it's worsted or DK. So they actually include instructions for both weights of yarn. So it is kind of a mashup of all different kinds of stitches. It's got seed stitch, stockinette, stripes, and some twisted rib, and it also features an I-cord bind-off, which I happen to be a really big fan of. I love I-cord bind-offs. Um, I actually have a shawl here that I'm going to show you that used an I-cord bind-off. I think it just has such a nice, neat, polished look. This particular shawl is $4.63 US dollars. It's, um, it's a top-down triangular, shape. They, they said in the description of the shawl that you can actually, so the pattern has different sections of different kinds of stitches. And they said that you can actually repeat the stitch, those, those sections as many times as you want, or you can swap them around and put them in different places. So it's made to be kind of adjustable. Next up, we have the Wonder Forever Shawl by Heidi May or the Velvet Acorn. And this shawl can be purchased, this shawl pattern can be purchased for $5.50. It is made with a DK weight yarn and it looks like she designed it to be um, kind of like a fading type of an effect. So you could do, I'm pretty sure, let me look here. Yeah, so she used a fingering, two fingering strands held together. And that's probably how she's getting this marled look and this very nicely blended look. But I suppose if you wanted the straight lineations of the color changes, you could use like a, several different colors of DK, or you could just knit this all in one color rather than do doing like a blend. I haven't knit this one, but I've had multiple people tell me what a, what a wonderful pattern it is. And it's really easy and it's really versatile and you can do all kinds of things with it. And so I wanted to make sure I included that on this list. The next shawl that I had picked out is for someone who enjoys lace work and wants to have maybe a little bit of a more airy shawl. It's called the Pebble Beach Shawl and it is by Helen Stewart. It is $7.25 US dollars. It is made with fingering weight. Let me see. So there's three different sizes. So if you want to do the smallest size, you will just need the one skein of fingering weight. If you want to do the medium or large sizes, then you would need two skeins. You would need anywhere from 650 to 880 yards of fingering weight yarn for the medium or the large. It's a simple lace and Helen Stewart claims that you can actually knit this while you're reading, but it also has a Pico edging and it is also crescent shaped, which I happen to love. Okay, the next pattern, I actually showed this last my, on my last podcast episode, so I'm not going to really get stuck here much, but I 
did want to include it because it's a very beautiful shawl and it is um, easy to knit. And this is the Dotted Stripes by Lise Bolgewald. Okay, and I showed this last time. So this is made with worsted weight yarn, 540 yards to about 600 yards. And this pattern is $4.24 in US dollars. So this is worked sideways from end to end. And then this border that runs along the bottom, which this is just moss stitch. It is actually worked afterwards. This one also has a an I cord binding on the one side, not on not on the side of the. Oh, maybe it does. Oh, it does. Okay, so it has a complete. It's a complete I cord binding the whole way around the shawl, and the little like color work section that it's actually mosaic knitting. So it's not stranded. It's mosaic. It was super easy, and I happen to use Drops Air. For this and if you want the details of that you can look in my my just my past episode which I think was episode 41 okay this next shawl that I really loved when I found it is called the Frostwork shawl and it is another pattern by Heidi May of the velvet acorn it is available for five dollars and fifty cents US dollars and unlike all of the other fingering weight uh, shawls that I've talked about oh, I'm sorry the one I just talked about was actually worsted but this is made in a bulky weight yarn and she has written the pattern to include two different sizes. She used Cascade Yarns 128 Superwash when she knitted her pattern sample. But I think that, you know, of course, any bulky weight yarn is going to look fantastic. Honestly, I think that the uh, Drops Air Hell Double would look beautiful in this shawl. So maybe that's something for me to think about in the future. So this is a this shawl is a combination of garter sections mixed with simple lace sections and I just thought this looked super cozy and part of that is probably because it's a bulky weight yarn and I really um I don't knit with bulky weight yarn very much but it does have a certain really cozy vibe to it doesn't it but this looks like it would be super easy and probably pretty fast so if you want to knit a gift shawl for someone this might be a really good um choice to make Okay, so this next pattern, a lot of you probably have heard about. I think it's been around for a while. I know I've heard multiple knitters talking about it in the past. It is by Hohi Locatelli, and it is called Party on My Needles. The reason this one appealed to me is because it looks like it would be fun because it has not just garter, which you know I've already told you I love, but it also has some striping in it. It looks like it's got some fan and feather. So let me give you some details about this one. This pattern is $6 and it is made using fingering weight yarn. There's two different sizes. The smallest size uses 750 yards and the largest uses a little bit over 1100 yards. It is also crescent shaped. It's got the lace ripple, the stripes and the garter section as I already said. And then she gives you three different bind off options um, when you're completing this. So yeah, that looked like a fun option if you wanted something with some more color and variety in it. Okay, this shawl that I'm going to show you is actually the one that I ended up knitting while in the car on route and coming home from Maine this summer. And it is a pattern by Tammy Gore. It is called Out of Winter. And it is um, priced at $5, which I feel like all of Tammy's... Her, her design company is called Narrow Path Designs, but I think if you would Google either Tammy Gore or that, or Narrow Path Designs, you would find her, her designs. But let me show you mine. And it's got creases because I had it folded up in my drawer. I always fold my knits. So this is made using fingering weight yarn, and it takes approximately 550 to 600 yards of fingering weight. It's crescent shaped. And of course you can see it has stripes in it and then it also has the lace border down below. And that is a very easy lace border with, um, you know, 
easy to memorize repeats. This is extremely lightweight and bouncy and I love that about it. But yeah, just stockinettes and it has, it increases differently than what I'm used to. I think you can see the little line of eyelets down where the increases were made. Um, yeah, so that is the Out of Winter Shawl by Tammy Gore. All right, this shawl is called Sugar Mountain and it is by Amy Christopher's Savory Knitting. It is a $6 pattern and I picked this because it looks so, so cozy. This was actually a, a collab, I think, between uh, Wing and a Prayer Farm. Yes, and then a, a um, yarn company. They did a collab and then Amy Christopher's must have designed this shawl for that. But the thing that intrigued me so much, and I don't have this pattern, I haven't purchased it to read it, but when I was reading the description, it is made, this shawl was designed so that you could use your very special skeins of yarn. And it appears that the way it's written, first of all, it's a triangle shape, shaped, but it's worked from one side to the other. And this is where I'm not really sure, but just reading the description, it appears that the border is also applied while you're doing the garter across. I think that's garter. Yeah. And the reason I came to that conclusion is because she suggests weighing your yarn and then splitting it in half and then working the increases of the shawl until you work up half of your yarn and then you start your decreases. So if she would say to weigh your yarn and do that and but then you'd still have to apply the border. That would not make sense. So the border must be included. You must work side to side with the border as well, which is different because most shawls, if not all of the shawls that I've knit, if they have a border, they're always an applied border, which means I go back later after I may, I knit the main body of the shawl and I'll go back and, you know, knit the border on afterwards. But this appears that you do it all at once. So that's actually kind of cool. And I love that idea because then if you do have yarn that you're not sure, is this going to be enough? This is a surefire way to know. You just measure your yarn ahead of time, split it in half, and then you know when to start your decreases. So that pattern is available. I don't remember if I said, but it's available for $6 and it is knitted using a sport weight. And she has written here, there's three different sizes that this pattern was written for. And depending on what size you knit, you use either you use anywhere from 300 to 900 yards of yarn. Okay, here is another uh, fingering weight. This one's called Velensod and it's by Heidi Alander. And um, it's fingering weight and you're using a size six US six needle. So uh, there's not a whole lot here that like for the pattern description, there's not a whole lot written. I did like that for a paid for pattern, it's only $2.63 it's only $2 US dollars. There's not a ton of projects. There's 39 uh, of people that have, lift, that have listed theirs on Ravelry. But it just looked like a really nice, uh, lightweight, small, more like maybe a shawlette type of a shawl. And it is crescent shaped and it's got the stockinette. The majority of the body is stockinette and then the, the really pretty lace border. Now, um, it does say that the size of the shawl is adjustable. So you can start the lace whenever you want and then do the lace chart repeats as many as you want. So you could make it bigger. Okay, this next shawl, I also have mine to show you. This was actually last year's vacation knit that I did in the car. And this is a Stephen West pattern. It is called Vertices Unite. I feel like probably most people have heard of this shawl. <laughs> I, this is huge. This thing is absolutely huge. It is a triangle shawl and it's geometric. And I can't even get the full effect of it into the screen of my phone because it's just so large. This pattern comes with two different sizes. I knit the biggest size because um, but even look, look at this. It's like so 
squishy because it's it's all Carter. This was super fun to make. I had I had so much fun making this because I didn't get bored. So even though it's all garter, you're constantly, you're not constantly, but you're often changing yarn. So like that whole panel was knit in the same yarn. This one was knit in the same yarn, but this one I striped yarn, this one I striped yarn, this one I striped yarn, and then you have this whole applied I-cord edging on the entire shawl. So this use, this is made using fingering weight yarn and it uses anywhere from 625 to 1300 yards, depending on what size. There's only two sizes included in the pattern. It's triangular shaped. It's all of these geometric shapes on this thing are formed using increases, decreases, and short rows. I can't remember if they were German short rows or wrap and turns, but if they were just wrap and turns, I'm positive that I... Did German short rows because that's what I do anytime a pattern calls for wrap and turns I just convert that to German short rows because I don't like my wrap and turns they they're too like I can see the hole that bothers me when I do short, German short rows everything looks nice and tight and closed up and I can't see where I did the short rows which is what I like so when you're knitting this you knit one geometric se section at a time and then you pick up and knit off of that one to start your next section. So you're not seaming this later. It's completely seamless. And I know a lot of people do not like picking up stitches, but I'm pretty certain if I'm remembering correctly, which I think I am because my joining all looks very neat. <laughs> I think the way that he had you work either side of each section was done in such a way that it would be super easy to pick that side up to know exactly where to insert your needle and pick a stitch up because this is super neat i mean it's it's it looks like yeah there look at this see this is what i'm talking about see this ridge so he must have included that in the pattern and i i remember that but then i was like was that that pattern and i'm pretty sure it was and this was fun because i used a whole skein almost for this and I used a good portion or maybe the whole skein of this as well but then the other sections I just used like this was from a 20 gram mini skein this was from some mini skeins as was this section and this section and these two red striped sections actually look identical no they don't you can see here you can see this was like a two solids and this was a speckled and a solid. So super fun. I'm actually planning on knitting another one of these. And I actually, as soon as I was completed with this project, I thought I want to knit another one of these. And my intention was to knit it in fall colors last fall, but I never got around to that. But this would be another great project. If you have a couple of full skeins of indie dyed yarn and then some scraps and you could put together a nice color, color palette, this would be fun. In fact, now I'm thinking maybe I should knit like a Christmas themed Vertices Unite. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Or a winter themed. We'll see what happens. But I don't know if I said this, but the cost of this pattern is $6.31 US dollars. To me, it is way worth it because it's a super fun pattern to knit and I plan on knitting more. Okay, I have three more patterns left that are paid for patterns and then I'll be moving on to the three patterns and actually I have samples of each of these patterns these next three because I knitted all three of them at some point the first one I want to talk about I almost didn't include this shawl on this episode because to me it wasn't a completely mindless knit it was like a good portion of it was mindless but then the last part was not but I'm gonna include it anyway because maybe you're traveling but yet you know you don't need like maybe you just have a short road trip and you could do the easy part in that. And then when you get home, finish up the more challenging part that requires more. It's not that it was challenging. It just required more thinking, more concentration. So this is the half Hansel Hap by Gudrun Johnston. Again, excuse the folds because it has been in, it's been in my drawer. And when you wear it, you don't see that anyway. But isn't this beautiful? All right, so I actually knit this 
using the exact colors that she had included in one of her samples that she uh, knit for this, that she had knit up for her pattern page. And I used the Jamison and Smith, I have it here, jumper weight yarn. Okay, so it uses a fingering weight yarn and it's knit on US size eight needles. And it's got the fan and feather here. So this is all garter up here at the top. And then the fan and feather lace is also not difficult. It was, it was doing the apply border, which like I said, it's, this wasn't difficult. You actually work it up sideways. It just might require a little bit more thought to get that pick up. I think I had to pick up stitches. It's been a couple of years since I've knit this. So now I'm not remembering everything correctly, but the first, the majority of this shawl is very easy to knit. And then you also have the color changes, which makes it interesting and something to look forward to after all the plain garter stitch. So let me see, there's three different sizes. Um, when I bought this pattern, there was only one size. So this is the size that was originally included in the pattern. And then she's since added two more sizes. And this is the most expensive pattern. It is an $8 pattern. Um, so I guess this is easy to an extent, and then it requires a little bit more concentration. So, all right, now, if you've been around here for a while, you know, how could I not include this next pattern in this simple yet beautiful special podcast episode? This shawl is the one that I have knit the most of in my knitting life. This is called the Farmhouse Shawl. It is by Cabin 4. And now those of you who have watched me for a long time, you're like, yeah, yes, and I knew it, right? Okay, so this is a super simple shawl. It's knit from the top down. It is triangular. It alternates sections of stockinette and sections of garter, which I love that. So it makes it really smushy and cozy. And then... It's totally worth the time it takes to cut and tie on all this trim. I promise you, because look at that. And I don't remember what this yarn is called, but it is a Cloudborn, I think. So the Farmhouse Shawl is a $5 pattern. I have made maybe five or six of these, and this is the only one I still currently have because I have given the rest away as gifts. <laughs> so... It, it's an easy pattern. Like it is a super easy pattern. And I think that it works well for any type of yarn actually. Um, so I, that was another reason I wanted to include it. This is worsted weight and this took, the pattern says if you want it to do it exactly as it's written, you need 840 yards of, yards of worsted weight yarn. So yes, this is just so super, super cozy. I love it. Oh, I thought that was the last one. I thought that was the last paid for pattern, but it's not. So this last one, I forgot to write it down in my tablet. And I, when I was gathering my shawls, actually I had, honestly, I had forgotten about this particular pattern. And then when I was gathering my shawls to begin this episode, I found this shawl and I thought, oh yeah, I need to include this because this one's not a difficult. It's the Brun shawl by Melody Hoffman. It, mine is humongous. Mine is so humongous. I can't even like show you how big it is, but this is special because I actually knit this in my own hand spun. But, um, so I don't, I can't, I'm not sure why this, the right rating difficulty is a little bit higher. I think it's like, hold on three. So three bars instead of two, all of the other shawls that I picked had either one or two bars as far as the difficulty was. I'm not sure why this one was more, maybe because of the bobbles. I don't know, but you wouldn't even have to have the bobbles on there. It's garter and stockinette and then the pretty increased ridge up the middle. And then just, I can give you some close-ups here. Now, if you were to knit this, um, Melody knitted this using, she wrote this pattern to use a sport weight yarn and you need 1100 yards. So you, it is a bigger shawl and actually, oh my goodness, are you okay? I got both of my dogs in here with me. 
I actually did not knit this as big as the pattern was written. I cut it off a little bit sooner, but then again, it was hand spun, so it probably wasn't a true sport weight either when I knit it. Yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say on that one. It's really beautiful. It's big. Mine is super cozy and warm because it's made with, it's just a special shawl to me. So that is the last of the paid for patterns. Now we're going to move on to the free patterns. Okay, so the first free pattern that I want to talk about was actually recommended to me by multiple viewers of my podcast, and it is the Be Simple Shawl. It is by Carolyn Gloss Toe Drink. And um, so she actually has this one and then one that is called Be Simple Variations Shawl, if I remember correctly, and it just has a few uh, things that are a little bit different. So either of those, but... I think that I must have just went with this one because I like the look of it better, maybe. Now this is the one that is, it says it's asymmetrical. So that's why I'm not sure if I'll knit it because of the awkwardness of me and asymmetrical shawls. <laughs> I just can't figure out how to wear them. Anyway, if this is a free pattern and the other really nice thing about it is it's designed for any weight of yarn. If you're going to use a um, well, no, she doesn't even specify that. I'm looking to see. So it looks like she used, hmm, her samples used all different kinds from sock yarn, from fingering weight yarn to worsted. And, uh, she said that you would need 400 to 450 yards of yarn for this. And this is just a garter stitch shawl that's knit sideways, which is very appealing because, you know, you're just going back and forth rather than having like long, a long edge. And, um, and then it has a Pico edging. So yeah, that looks really simple. I actually would definitely knit this if it wasn't asymmetrical. The next one is also a shawl that I have made over and over again. It is called the Age of Brass and Steam and it, the pattern was written by Orange Flower Yarn. I have, I don't have any of these on hand, but I have knit many of the, of this particular pattern, um, for our prayer shell ministry at our church, because it's a super simple pattern and it's good. I think it's, no, I know that it's good to use, like it's written for DK weight yarn, but you could use any weight yarn because you just keep making it bigger. It's very easy to adjust the size. You can make it from like a tiny kerchief that you just kind of do a cute tie around your neck, or you could make it a really long shawl and you just change the, the size of it by just um, doing, adding more repeats. It's also triangular shape. So yeah, this is really good. Another, um, I used, so for the prayer shawl ministry, I use a lot of the Lion Brand Mandela, which is like a color changing yarn. It naturally changes because that's just easier to do it that way. Um, and it still makes a really nice look. And those types of yarns look really nice with this particular pattern, um, just to see the V shape of the color change. And I'm pretty sure I've shown pictures of some of these that I've made for the Parishal Ministry in past episodes of my podcast. But yeah, I really highly recommend this pattern. I think this one is adorable. And I want it, I want the one that she made in the red. There is something about a red scarf or a red shawl. I love the look of this and I love that ripple along the bottom. This is knit in sport weight yarn and it takes 400 to 440 yards of that. The size of it is actually not a huge shawl. It's more like a shawlette. And I just, I think the thing that drew me so much to this particular pattern was the color and that very feminine ripple along the edge. I just love that so much. It's a ruffled lace edge and I just think that looks so feminine. So I'd really like to make that one. Okay, the next shawl that I found is called the Light as a Feather Shawl and this pattern is by Shannon Dunbabin. And this is an Aran weight shawl, so it is big. It looks big and it looks cozy. Um, and it is made using 580 yards of Aran weight yarn. 
this is triangle shaped. It looks like it is stockinette and then yarn overs throughout it. And I just thought it looked really cozy, big and cozy and, and you know, something like I would love to wrap myself up in. Okay. Speaking of something that I would love to wrap myself up in this shawl, the Be Simple Shawl by Jane Hunter. This also looks like a really cozy shawl. Now she knit this using fingering weight yarn and using a size six or a size five needle. Um, she said to kind of see what gauge you like the, the most. I just thought this one looked nice and squishy and cozy as well. Oh, if you look at her sample page, it says that she, or her project page, it says that she used fingering weight yarn for this. But then if you go down and read the details of it, you can actually use any kind of yarn, any weight of yarn, because it's such a simple uh, design that it can be repeated over and over again to make it larger or smaller. It is a garter stitch shawl with a pico edging. So I feel like there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a pattern here. I apparently like the look of garter stitch shawls with pico ed edging. Okay, so I have two left. And this next one is another Stephen West pattern, and this one is free. I think this was one of his original designs, actually. It is called the Boneyard Shawl. I have made this as well for um, shawls for the prayer shawl ministry because it is such an easily adjustable shawl whenever it comes to size. It's a top-down triangular shawl. He wrote the pattern to be made with DK weight yarn, approximately 650 yards of it. But again, I think you could adjust that because it's, it's just stockinette and garter sections, and then you just increase. And so you could keep going with that for as long as you want. Um, also another thing, and I think he must've updated this recently is in the instructions. Now he includes increases. He includes how to increase um, your shawl to make it grow in two different ways. You can either use the make one left, make one right, which would make less of a, an opening or a hole, or you could do the yarn overs. So it depends on the look you want. And he includes instructions for both. So I thought that was another one that I wanted to share with you guys. So the last shawl I want to share with you is called the Mara shawl. This has been on my list of things to knit. I think since I learned how to knit <laughs> and I haven't made it yet. So that's kind of weird, isn't it? But um, this is another one of those shawls that are very easy. It's very easy to adjust the size just by um, completing your increases, you know, go over and over again. The pattern was written for DK weight yarn, yarn, approximately 675 yards. So it's a garter stitch triangle shawl that is worked from the top down. And then it is trimmed with a pleated border and it's the pleated border that I love. I love the look of this pleated border. They're saying that you can knit this in DK or fingering weight yarn. Okay. So in the pattern notes on Ravelry for this particular shawl, the sample that they show is only 46 inches in width. So I would definitely make that bigger. I have one shawl that I knitted six or seven years ago that is from Quince Co. It's a, it's a, pattern from Quince Co. And it is not wide enough. So it doesn't really stay around my, sh like my neck or shoulders very nicely. It tends to want to fall back. So if I would make this, I would definitely make it bigger. So yes, that the Mara shawl is very beautiful. It is actually, oh, I didn't tell you it is the pattern was put out by Madeline Tosh and it was, um, they suggest Madeline Tosh DK or merino light but again you could use whatever you wanted it is one of those patterns that you could just easily adapt adapt to any kind of yarn and any weight of yarn in my opinion just by reading you know how it's actually made so i love those kind of patterns that you can play around with size and also yarn weight those are really good patterns to have because then you're not just stuck i like patterns but i also like to have some flexibility in them especially with shawls it's a lot easier to do that with shawls than it is with garments like sweaters. <laughs> so anyway, that is it. That those are all of the shawl patterns that I have for you. I know there are so many more out there. I actually had other suggestions from viewers, but I couldn't include them all. So I just really tried to go with the ones that I thought would be the most simple. A lot of them probably look very similar to others. Um, but you know, I just, I don't know. Those were the ones that caught my eye when I was 
looking, doing my Ravel research. So I hope that you guys find some, a pattern or two on here that is inspiring to you and that you can maybe knit up for a Christmas gift because you know it is November. And so that is starting to be on all of our minds. Uh, I'm not quite there yet, but you know, if I'm going to make somebody a shawl, I better get started soon, right? So I hope this video was helpful to you. And if you have any suggested shawl patterns that you really love, go ahead and drop them in the comments below because it's always fun for other people, myself and the other viewers, to be able to go down into the comments and kind of see everyone's suggestions. I really like these types of videos. I like when podcasters put kind of like compilations of different patterns that they have found or that they have been inspired by. And like, it's always, I like when it's under a certain theme. Um, I just find them so interesting to watch and they always give me great ideas. And then I always end up overwhelmed because I already have a lot that I want to knit, but it's still fun to watch. I'm actually planning on doing that scrappy episode. Uh, that was the other episode that in the summer I had talked about doing just different patterns to use your uh, mini skeins or your scrap yarn. And I thought, well, this is a really good time of year. So I'm, I'm fingers crossed. <laughs> Don't hold me to this, but I'm planning to get that episode out in a couple of weeks, because if any of you are doing Advent, which I'm not, um, I, I, I've never purchased an Advent calendar, yarn calendar because I, they're just out of my like, budget that I feel comfortable spending at one time on yarn. Um, but I have done exchanges with several people in the past, which I did one last year and that was a lot of fun. And then I've done, I've done that several times where, um, uh, someone else and I send each other like our own handmade advent. So even if you're not doing advent though, so many of us have scraps of yarn and I'm going to be focusing mostly, I think on sock weight yarn, because that seems to be the most scraps that I personally have. And um, I'm gonna be sharing those with you guys too, so that it, come December, if you are doing an advent of some sort, if you maybe you'll find a good pattern on there that will be exciting to you and you'll wanna knit. So thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful uh, day and happy knitting.